Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the question is, when polygenic inheritance was first talked about, because long long time ago, Mendel had performed his experiments and he had given the principles of inheritance, which is also known as the Mendelian inheritance. So later when people came up with the concept of polygenic inheritance, how did they experimentally prove it? How did they give an experimental evidence? So Nielsen L. in 1908 gave the first experimental evidence with kernel color of wheat. So what he did was he crossed red kerneled variety with white kerneled variety of wheat. So let us look at the parents that he had chose. He took the red kernel variety. So let us say that the red kernel variety is denoted by capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B and the white kernel variety is small a, small b, again small a, small b. So this is the white kernel color and this is the red kernel color. So here how many genes do we have? So we have two pairs of polygenes that is A and B. So where presence of A a like A has two alleles, capital A, small a, B has two alleles, capital B, small b. But A and B are two different genes altogether. So presence of capital A means it is more red, it is adding the red color to the kernel. Presence of capital B also means it is adding the red color to the kernel. But if you have the recessive alleles present, like you, if you have small a present, that means it is not red. Similarly, if you have small b present, that also means that it is not red. So if you have more capital letters, that is more dominant alleles, they are all, they were all contributing more to the red color. And if you have more recessive alleles, they are like not contributing to the red color. So with this idea in mind, let's see what happened in the next F1 and F2 generation. So, so this is how he started and he found that in the F1 generation, so F1 generation, the plants that he obtained were of the genotype capital A small a, capital B small b. So like unlike the monogenic pattern of inheritance in this case, they were all not red in color. So in fact, their shade of red was slightly lighter. So this was basically an intermediate color between red and white. So it was, you can see that it was slightly pinkish shade. So it was neither like dark red nor it was completely white. So it was somewhere in between red and white. Now in the next step, what was done? So these intermediates were self-bred. So that means these kernels which were like which, which were slightly in between red and white in color they were self-bred that is capital A small b capital B small b crossed with capital A small a capital B small b so with that what happened so what are the possible gametes that can form from each of these organisms so from capital A small a capital B small b you can have four types of gametes that is capital A capital B capital A small b small a capital B and small a small b and the same is true for this one as well now when you cross them so these are the various possibilities that you might have this would be capital A capital B capital A capital B this would be capital A small b This would be capital A, small b, capital A, capital B. This would be small a, capital B, capital A, capital B. This is small a, small b, capital A, capital B. This is capital A, capital B, capital A, small b. This is capital A, small b, capital A, small b. This is small a, capital B, capital A, small b. This is small a, small b, capital A, small b. And in a similar way, you can fill this entire table. So I think by now all of you know all of these, right? Because these were already covered in the general videos of um, class 12th genetics, where we have taught you how to do the, how to get F1 generation and F2 generation. So this concept will remain the same.
So now when we have filled this table with all the possibilities and in fact we have also colored the blocks accordingly. So what do you see in, in that particular genotype where you have all the small letters that is all the recessive alleles. That means that would be white in color because only the capital letters or the dominant alleles contribute to more red. So small a, small b, small a, small b, this would be white in color. Similarly, all capital letters would be dark red in color. Rest in the, the rest of them, wherever you have more capital letters, it would be more red. Wherever you have more small letters, it would be more towards the white side. So total, how many different colors do you see here? So in the F2 generation, how many total different colors do you see? So you find one dark red, you see one white and in between you see the intermediates. So what are these intermediates? In this intermediate, you see this light color that is very light red. You also see slightly medium red. You also see more dark red and finally you see pure red. So between pure red and pure white, you have a dark red, a medium red and a light red. So these are the three intermediate varieties that you see. So what is the conclusion with this experiment? So this is your F2 generation. So the conclusion from this experiment is that the kernel color of wheat is determined by two pairs of genes. And what are those two pairs? So one pair of gene is this capital A, the other pair of gene is capital B. So one pair in the sense, this A always exists in pairs. Similarly, B also exists in pairs. So whether it is capital B, capital B or capital B, small b or small b, small b, but they always exist in pairs. So you have two pairs of genes. One is A, the other is B. And these two are two different genes. So basically here, the trait, what would be the color of the wheat kernel that is dependent on the alleles located on these two different genes A and B. So that is why it is polygenic inheritance. That is the inheritance or the phenotype is actually controlled by multiple genes or it is controlled by multiple alleles located on different genes. Now let us also look at whatever happened in this experiment. So we started with a pure red and a pure white parents, pure red kernel and pure white kernel. We crossed these two. And what did we obtain? In the F1 generation, we obtained something which was intermediate between the two. So this is something which we obtained in the F1 generation. In F2 generation, we obtained these different five phenotypes. So the number of phenotypes that we obtained in the F2 generation is 5, right? So you had out of 5, 2 were the parental phenotypes that is pure red and pure white and the remaining 3 were the intermediate phenotypes. Now the number of intermediate phenotypes increases as the number of polygenes increases. Like here you have two pairs of polygenes. When we were talking about the human skin color, you had three pairs of polygenes. Therefore, the number of intermediate uh, intermediates that were formed were even more. Okay? So as the number of polygenes increases, the number of intermediate phenotypes also increases. Now, if you see that there is also a continuous variation, you see from white to pure red, you have your color is actually slightly increasing one after another, which shows that there is a continuous variation. So you started with white, gradually the color increased to an intermediate color, it became all the more dark and then it became dark red. So why is this graph like this? That is because of the probability of each of these. So when you look at the ratio, the phenotypic ratio in F2 generation, so you see that the probability of capital A, B, A, B, this is 1 out of 16. Similarly, when you look at the probability of small a, b, small a, b, so its probability is again 1 out of 16. When you look at the dark red color, so how many dark red color boxes do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So where you have 3 dominant alleles. So their probability is 4 out of 16. Similarly, when you look at this light red, 
that is almost pink so how many such boxes you have 1 2 3 4 so its probability is again 4 by 16 and what about the medium red you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 so you have 6 medium red boxes so basically when you look at the ratio of all these five so for red the ratio in the f2 generation is 1 out of 16 for white also it is 1 out of 16 for medium red it is 6 out of 16 whereas for the dark red it is 4 out of 16 and for the light red also it is 4 out of 16 so it is basically in the ratio of f2 generation phenotypic ratio is 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1 so if you compare this phenotypic ratio with the phenotypic ratio of human skin color in F2 generation. So what was the ratio in that case? That time the ratio was 1 is to 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1. So why that was so big? Because the number of intermediate phenotypes were more. And why that was more? Because the number of polygenes were more. So human skin color is determined by three pairs of polygenes. Whereas the kernel color of wheat is determined by two pairs of polygenes. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.